Here are four ways you can use ChatGPT4 or other large language models to actually improve your life. First, emails. I figured it would do what I wanted it to do, but ChatGPT4 is an absolute pro email mediator and editor. Here's what I asked it to do. Can I have you read an email I want to send, but change the tone of it? I wanna speak my mind, but then have the AI rewrite what I'm saying in a more professional and acceptable way. So basically, you can use ChatGPT4 to write the email that you'd actually love to write, but one that would ultimately get you fired, and then have the AI reword what you said into a professional email. From now on, with all of your work correspondence, you can say exactly what you're thinking and then have ChatGPT do the politically correct thing. I said, dear asshole boss, your shitty planning has left me overworked and I don't feel like you pay me what I'm worth. You're a dick most of the time. People don't like you and we talk about you behind your back. I want more money or else I'm gonna go find a new job. Your stupid jokes aren't funny and you treat the women like you're trying to date them and it's gross. Obviously you can't speak this way to your boss, so here's what ChatGPT4 gave me back after fixing my tone. And it even added a subject line, which I forgot to mention. Subject. Request for compensation review and feedback on workplace environment. Dear boss's name, I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to take a moment and discuss my current workload and compensation, as well as share some observations about the overall workplace environment. Lately I've been feeling overwhelmed with the number of tasks and projects assigned to me. It seems like the planning process could benefit from some improvements to help manage the workload more effectively. I believe that a discussion on how to better allocate resources and balance responsibilities would benefit the entire team. Additionally, I feel my current compensation may not reflect the work I'm putting in. I would like to kindly request a review of my salary and potential adjustment to better match my contributions to the company. On another note, I've observed that the overall atmosphere in the office could be improved. It appears that some team members are not entirely comfortable with the interpersonal dynamics. This could be affecting their morale and productivity. I believe that fostering an inclusive and respective environment is crucial for the success of our entire team. Blah, 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 blah. Thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to our conversation. And I want to note here that I actually love my boss. Eric, if you're watching this, you're doing a great job. One more email example before we move on to number two. This time you're the boss and you've got an employee who can't get his shit together. Same story. Here's the email I'd like to send to Chad. Chad, look, idiot. I've told you 500 fucking times where to find the spreadsheet on donut ingredients. I'm in a donut factory, clearly. It's in the f***ing Dropbox under your goddamn name, numbnuts. Go in there and tell me how much flour we have and how much we need to order before we f***ing run out and have to close the store, you idiot. Here's ChatGPT's response. Dear Chad, I hope this message finds you well. I wanted to remind you about the importance of keeping track of our donut ingredient inventory, specifically the flour. This is crucial for maintaining our production and ensuring the store can operate smoothly. As we've discussed before, the spreadsheet containing the necessary information can be found in our shared Dropbox folder. To locate the file, please look in the folder with your own name, as the spreadsheet is stored there for your convenience. Once you've accessed the spreadsheet, kindly review the current flower stock and determine the quantity that we need to order to avoid any shortages. Timely ordering is essential to prevent any potential disruptions for our store operations. Blah, 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 blah. Thank you for your attention on this matter. I look forward to receiving updates on the flower inventory and the necessary order. It's perfect. I love it. Number two, scheduling. Let's say you have a pretty busy schedule and you need to find a time block in there somewhere where you can work on a pretty big project uninterrupted. You can just look at your calendar in a list view, select the whole thing, copy it, paste it into ChatGPT, and ask it to find you a four hour window of time. It'll scan through your month and instantly spit out an available four hour block of time. And since it's built to be conversational, you can ask it follow up questions like you would an assistant. If I'm willing to work until 8 p.m., are there other options? ChatGPT responds, yes, if you're willing to work until 8 p.m., you have additional options for a four hour opening. Wednesday, April 12th, after the SO weekly time call, Thursday, April 13th, after the ICFF operations catch up, Wednesday, April 19th, after the SO weekly time call, and Friday, April 21st, as there are no events scheduled for that day. I'm pretty disorganized with my time, and I just add stuff on my phone with my voice all the time, and so I never really know when I'm free. This one's pretty useful. Number three, writing short articles or blog posts. You can feed ChatGPT for notes that you've taken, even if they're completely all over the place and sort of out of context, and ask it to do a summary for you. These are some notes I took during an investor relations conference for a stock I follow, Microvision, and I asked ChatGPT if it could take a look at these and write a short article. It spit out a five paragraph article that reads pretty much just like every other real article read after that meeting was public. Even though my notes were kind of all over the place, the information it decided to write about was all parsed out properly and seemed coherent and correct. I would be shocked if within this year, half of what we read as news summaries haven't been run through a large language model and written by an AI. This is almost certainly the future of immediate news. Journalists can just hammer out a bunch of facts and have ChatGPT write it out as a grammatically correct set of paragraphs. Number four, and the thing that I most recently used this for in my own life, movie franchise summaries. Let's say you want to go see the new John Wick movie.
movie. It's the fourth movie in the John Wick series, but you only saw the first and second one, and now that was several years ago. You can ask ChatGPT to catch you up on the main story points so you can go into the movie knowing what had happened previously. And you don't have to word it any sort of special way. You can treat it like asking your movie buff friend. I said, I'm gonna go see John Wick 4, but I didn't see the third movie, and the first and second ones came out such a long time ago, I can barely remember what happened. Can you catch me up? ChatGPT says, of course! John Wick series is an action thriller franchise starring Keanu Reeves as the titular character, a retired hitman seeking vengeance. Here's a brief summary of the first three films. And then it bangs out the first three films. It's only a paragraph each, but they're like five sentences long, hitting all the notes. Then, and I just think this is so f***ing cool. Again, just like you're talking to someone who saw and knows the movies really well, I asked ChatGPT about John Wick's dog. I can't remember, but did his dog survive the third movie? Yes, the dog that John Wick acquires in the second movie survives the events of the third film, John Wick Chapter 3, Parallelbellum. This dog is different from the one in the first movie, Daisy, who was tragically killed by Losov Terezov and his gang. The new dog, unnamed Pitbull, is adopted by Wick at the end of the second movie and remains with him throughout the third film, although he's not involved in the main action sequences. He's shown to be alive and well at the end of Parabellum. It understands English just the way we speak it. It's gnarly. You have to remember too, this is the infancy of this technology. This is the original Nintendo where the future has a PlayStation 5. What we're experiencing now is ChatGPT as a Razer flip phone camera when later there's going to be an iPhone 14 with a 48 megapixel computational photography. This is the very beginning of what these tools are going to be capable of. Personally, I cannot wait for Apple to come out with their version of this technology because of course they're working on one. When I can just talk to Siri like she's an actual assistant since she would already have access to all the information and apps on my phone. When can I be like, hey Siri, I'm thinking about going to Seattle. Will you book me the cheapest ticket that gets me the most United Airline miles and then have a rental car waiting for me when I land? Or, hey Siri, I think I wrote back to Sarah about the Philadelphia trust plan thing, but I can't remember. I don't understand. Hey Siri, I think I wrote the <laughs> Yeah, you don't trust understand, thing, but you will. But I can't that kind of thing is the real future. That's coming, and soon. I made a video just a couple of months ago with a few other YouTube folks trying to predict the future. And one of the things we talked about was what's the next internet or the next cell phone, like the next thing that's gonna change everything. This is that thing. Large language models are that thing. ChatGPT is the first one I know about, but it's basically an Apple II Plus, and we are in the 1980s. That's all of it. <laughs>